Mm-hmm. Hello, and welcome to McDougal's Medicine with Dr. John and Mary McDougal. I'm your daughter, I'm their daughter, and your host, Heather McDougal. Mm-hmm. We have lots to cover tonight, lots. Um, we promised you we'd talk about early detection because it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we also have a special guest. So let's get started. Hi, Mom and Dad, Dr. Hi. McDougal and Mary, Hi. great to see Hi. you. Yes, uh, uh, yes. Port- Portland is lit up <laughs> with pink ribbons every place because uh-huh. it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Well, it's really Breast uh, Cancer Industry a Month is what it really is. <laughs> uh, it's where they promote, you know, all, all different kinds of therapies. Uh, what we're going to talk about, there's a couple articles that Heather's going to put in, in the chat. And what we're going to talk about is early detection and uh, and also... Screening, all different kinds of screening. Well, that's screening, that's early detection. Okay. We're also going to talk about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which it is right now. So, Linda. Yes. Oh, well, introduce her first. How long, well, how long have we known Linda? Linda oh, my goodness. I think about 34 years, I think. I, I think so, too. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah a long time. time. Because that's when my neighbor told me about you. Oh, okay. 34 years ago, we're walking our dogs around the park, and she, I had all these health problems, and she said, oh, that'll go away. Just get a hold of Dr. John McDougall. And I said, who? <laughs> Who's that? And uh, she told me uh, the name of your book at that time. I'm not even sure what the name of it was. Something about the 12 day program back then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, it was, okay, uh, well, I read that book and then I read it. It was 12 Days to Dynamic Health. That's it, yeah. So I read it once and then I read it twice and then I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I still couldn't believe it because I, I thought, how come I didn't know any of this and how can all these people get well? I mean, you had examples in your book. Somebody had breast cancer, somebody had heart disease, somebody had was overweight, or, or all had three. And they were in this position, and at the end of the book, they were all better because they changed their food. And I could not believe it. I, I jumped right in. I didn't even meet you yet. Well, you, 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 had, you had some struggles. I know you did. Not not right away, not that not way. right away. I well, know you discovered the program, and I think that's really wonderful. And you read our book, and lots yeah. of people have. But what, what, what you finally made some changes, some really big changes over what's been the last three or four years, and we're talking going back to thirty nine years. What kind what kind of uh, of things did you discover just recently that caused you? If I remember, you weighed a little bit more than you weigh right now. Yeah. Give us that kind of history. I want to, I want to hear about <laughs> what happened well, to you and what you finally, because so many people are on this journey, what you finally, uh, you know, helped you get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. No, I had um, an addiction to high caloric dense food. I yeah. was, I was addicted to a vegan ice cream, no oil, <laughs> but made with nuts, right? I mean, I didn't eat just a little bit. I would eat the whole pint by myself. Um, and then I'd have another one the next day. And then I had some oil-free vegan cheeses I was addicted to. <laughs> and, and you can be addicted to these foods as well. So, and then, of course, always had to have guacamole on everything or avocados and olives and nuts and seeds. I was addicted to a very high-fat version of the McDougal program. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that takes it to the extreme. I would say you mentioned about everything, about everything I'd ask people not to do if they yeah. want to, if they want to be a healthy vegan. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah, how much did you weigh at that time, Linda? Do you mind? I, um, I, I remember I think, the pictures. I think it was a hundred. Let's see, one hundred fifty-five or something like that. Yeah, and, and I and I do want to mention that Linda is involved in helping people understand, and I want you to talk about this a little later, helping people understand about good nutrition and particularly helping people uh, get an exercise program that works for them. So make sure we give that information out yeah. uh, so that, you know, because I know everybody's going to like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, anyway, you, 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 you kind of got me with those vegan ice creams, especially the ones that are uh, chocolate. Mm. So what did you, you finally do that caused you 
I mean, you look great. And you, and you well, thank you. Things. I'm I, I'm now 119, which is what I should have been all along. Yeah. Well, what did you give up? Or what did you put in? What did you add to your diet? Let's let's no, talk it's about what it. you took away. I want to know what she added. She had to add. I took comfort. away all. I took away virtually the addictive foods for me, which were the ice creams and the cheeses, and um, I have avocado still, and sometimes some nuts, but I don't eat it in the processed form. You know, it's not in a packaged form that you can have to read the ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole nut and not nothing else. You know. But so, do you eat do you eat more potatoes? Oh my God. I eat uh AJ and I were having this discussion the other day. She said, Linda, you outdo me, don't you? I said, Yep. I got you beat big time. She eats a lot of <laughs> potatoes, but not like I do. <laughs> um I like those uh little not little, but kind of medium sized Yukon gold potatoes. And I like um sweet potatoes and I like the white potato, but I don't have that one as much uh, because when I taught food for life, I found out beta carotene is in the Yukon gold. So that's a good version of potato to eat, I thought. So I, I make about those medium ones I can eat. Jim, can't, he just spent like $50 on potatoes for like three days the other day <laughs> because I buy so many. And in fact, when I buy them at the store, the 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 grocery uh, the grocery lady says my god you buy a lot of potatoes and i said and you're here all the time with those potatoes i said yeah no I, and i can tell you about how i lost my weight too and then we have a conversation and then i get the whole thing going and i tell them about dr john mcdougall and oh linda <laughs> let's 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 stop that stuff let, uh, can we, let's start with how old you are i think people would like to oh know. okay i'm 78 and i feel great and I do you run these exercise classes, and I feel great. Yeah, but you, again, you know, back when we were with the all, you know, the, the, the vegan high fat ice creams and desserts and so on, it wasn't working out for you. And now you're eating a really simple diet, right? Very simple. You it's like so you simple. like your food. I don't even make uh, unless it's a birthday or a holiday. Mm -hmm. I don't make recipes. And you're, and you're spreading the good news to people who are close to you. And I, you've helped uh, at least one person you just introduced me to a couple of minutes ago. And would you like to talk about him a little bit? Oh, uh, yes. He, um, after my husband passed away eight years ago, I met him about seven years ago. And <clears throat> the funny thing is he had looked what, up. What's Tim's name? <laughs> I, I, what's Tim's name? <laughs> oh, Tim's name is Jim. <laughs> anyway, Jim. Jim just turned 82 and so he's older than you two and and me too but he uh, had just taken a course or a class with Dr. Don Forrester and he was kind of interested in this nutrition thing. He was eating everything and so Dr. Don told him to look me up because I have the Sacramento Vegan Society. We have 5,080 people in there now in oh, my really? one, in my meetup group. So everybody in my meetup group gets to hear about you too, too also. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, so he, he looked me up, he called me and we went for coffee. Yeah. And that was it. And, uh, we hit like it off hear... right away. We hit it off right away. And then I told him that I'm, I'm fully plant based and no oil for sure. Sometimes a little salt, but not much. And he jumped right in. I guess he wanted to, I don't know, be with me. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he jumped right in and, um, and hasn't looked back. And, and I, how he, has he I, done? I you were he was still drinking alcohol. Now this last year, I think I got him off yeah, the alcohol. I, I, I appreciate that. I, I got him off that too. It, it, but but he has, lost is, he, is he healthier than when you started with him? Yeah, he, he lost 45 pounds. He lost his high blood pressure, yeah. his heart disease. And um, he feels so much better when he started running. He feels right. better when he's running now. Linda, I, what I'd like you to do is I'd like to have you tell people how to get a hold of you. Yeah, it, that would be important for them, I think. Okay. Well, I think the best way is my email, which is vegan mentor. So right here, veganmentor at gmail.com. You'll, uh, oh. you'll inform them of classes and other things you do, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do classes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, listen, you've, you've, you've <laughs> sung, sung a lot of praise 
for the McDougal program. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. But, you know, one thing I'd like you to share with the people here, because mm-hmm. one of the reasons we do this show is we want to get people interested in, in our 12-day program. Yes. And, uh, you know, you went through it. Having You know, I know we've known each other for you know, for almost years. half a century. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> So, uh, but but you recently went through the program, and just if you could just make a, a few uh, comments about it. And oh yeah, no, I I needed a little help with my own discipline. I was telling everybody else what to do, but not following my own advice. I was real good at telling everybody what to do. I'm always good at that, by the way. But <clears throat> so what happened is, I decided I better do the program. I wanted to see what you did anyway um, to help people so I could help promote it better too. And much to my surprise, I learned more. I thought I couldn't learn anything else. I thought I knew everything, right? I mean, I've been doing this for so long and I've helped people lose 80 pounds, 85 pounds. I've helped people lose all kinds of weight, but I wasn't doing it for myself very well. So I knew that if I took your program, I would find out exactly what to do. And I did, and I did it. And it wasn't that hard. And it was, and I started feeling better immediately. I mean, in the first week, I started taking off weight. The added ice cream weight <laughs> that I had <laughs> was going away very quickly. <clears throat> and it just kept getting better until the end. And I was down to my ideal weight for the first time. Now, I didn't, I didn't have my heart disease and the other things that I had because I'd been doing this for so long. But... Um, Um, I had, um, you know, all that extra weight and I'm still teaching aerobics, mind you. I'm not (laughs) supposed to be overweight teaching aerobics. Linda, would you mind, uh, if taking some questions from Heather and maybe from the, some of the Sure, sure. No problem. But I I can't recommend your program enough because I think think they got that, Linda. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much. It works. All right. Well, Linda, people can't believe you're 78. Oh, you look, you look amazing. And you got to see them. Mo- oh, look at that. I love yeah. it. So that's the next question is everyone wants yeah. to know what you do for exercise. Well, I teach aerobics and in that aerobics class, I teach a cardio part and a weight training part. And, and because of COVID, I got cut back. And they always cut, cut the oldest people, teachers first. So <laughs> they, when COVID started to ease off, they never gave you my... I had 10 classes a week before COVID. Now I'm t- two. Oh. oh, well, I still have the two, and I'm happy for it because it's keeping my muscles up. And um, I also uh, do a brisk walk or walk run on the other days, on the other days when I'm not there. So I keep my exercise up, always have. I've been teaching aerobics for something like 30 years and uh, I've taught everything from Zumba Zumba to kickboxing always weight training classes and I'm a personal trainer as well and I used to do that a lot in fact I had several clients I trained at the gym and I would have been fired had they known but I was also changing to the McDougal starch based diet (laughs) and they both of those couples to this day that I remember are still eating the McDougal program way. They're still doing that, the starch Sorry. solution. And Linda, we got lots of other questions. Okay. All I right. just want to say one more thing though about them. The other day, one of them, I haven't seen them for 15 years. I mean, I haven't um, talked to them for a long time, but they called me and they said, hi. I said, hi. Oh, I haven't heard from you for so long. I said, well, we're on our bicycle. And I said, oh, good. And, and it's because of you. You did that. We're on our bicycle. I said, well, Linda, okay. Linda, people, yeah, I love that. Again, how, can, how can people get a hold of you? Because I know there are some people who would like to hear more of the story, but we can only tell a short part tonight. Okay. All right. So. I, shared, I shared Linda's email in the chat. So Kim wants to know how you quit the vegan junk food. Um, well, I knew that I, I started looking in the mirror. <laughs> And I knew something wasn't quite right because I had gone up and down. I wasn't straight, you know, always overweight. I I had highs and lows and the highs were always when I slipped into the vegan processed food. And so 
I guess I looked in the mirror not that long ago now and said this is not right I've got to fix this I've and I need some help myself I'm a coach who needs coaching and I found it that's I just decided when I looked in the mirror I, I look sideways in the mirror looking face on I don't look too bad but looking sideways in the mirror there's this yeah, little I, I, belly uh, there you know that little <laughs> belly that sticks out thank you Linda let's, let's <laughs> we've, we've, we've got lots of questions did, did, you okay. also, did you also make your diet more simple uh yeah yes I did I started making um less lasagna <laughs> You know, less less very rich recipes. I could get into rich recipes very easily. I like to cook. Uh, um, yeah. And so that, yeah, my life, my, my, my diet is so simple, you wouldn't believe it. And I'll tell you if that if you want to know what it is. Well, people yeah. always like to hear what you eat. I mean, that's a theme that we hear over and over again about <laughs> successful. Okay, well, McDougalers for, for, breakfast is today, simple. for breakfast today, I had cooked the vegetables yesterday. I, I take um, red onion and I have a scan pan like Mary, because she told us to get that one. <laughs> and I put, chopped up the red onions, put in the pan and put some water in and cooked them up a little. Then I added um, some celery, some garlic, some uh, broccoli and cauliflower and some carrots. What else did I put in there? I cut, oh, red bell peppers, because I love those. And I think that was about all I had, but I had a lot of it. So you eat, you eat vegetables for breakfast? Well, yeah, so I, I had those. So I had, for this morning, I had like a great big bowl of that. And on top of that, I had my pre-cooked um, Yukon Golds. I had like four of them on top sometimes five, depending on the size. And I ate that whole thing for breakfast. And now by 11 o'clock, I might do that again. Or I might just have my potatoes again, or I might be going somewhere and I carry my potatoes with me. So that I am never hungry. I don't like being hungry. I'm a volume eater. Chef a and I, AJ and I talk about that a lot. I said, I can now do eat you. And she said, I don't know about that. <laughs> because we, we are both volume eaters. And so I need my potatoes with me so I don't get tempted to eat anything anywhere else. If I go out with people to lunch or dinner, I eat ahead. I eat my whole dinner ahead. And I eat a potato in the car on the way over. When I get there, if I have a little salad with no dressing with them and they don't care, they might say something and I just say something like, well, my doctor said if I eat that or this, I will have high cholesterol, so I can't do it. And that solves the problem. What are they going to say? Eat that? get your cholesterol? No. Now, if there's somebody I really want to talk about what I really do it for too, is for the animals. I, I'm a big animal rights activist. I get arrested. I do everything. <laughs> I got arrested when I was 76, you know, so animals are very, very key for me. This gulags of despair, as Philip Wallen would say, he calls them gulags of despair. We have put animals in for no reason. To you know, Linda, I think I think we really ought to get you your own show, your own. <laughs> All right, let's get in. You have other questions uh, over Linda. Well, let's see. I think um, what was it that you know? What was it during the twelve day course that just sort of flip that switch for you and you know what well, was for me it, I didn't need any switching because I already believed in the McDougal program see so I just knew whatever they told me to do I would do Linda, I guess the question is did you like Doug Lyle or did you like Jeff Nolan? oh yeah <laughs> <clears throat> I love Doug Lyle in fact I love Doug Lyle so much I, I actually call him you know every few months to have a whole consult with him because he helped my mental state too, you know. He's the, I call him the best psychologist in the world. Oh, he's the best. And he always, he just knows exactly how to, um, for me to take steps to fix whatever it was. And I love that about him. Yeah. And everybody was so kind and sweet. And I, of course, I did, they didn't get mad at me because I was so perfect. I was a good girl. <laughs> I was a good girl. I did okay. everything perfectly. So. You just needed um, a little tweaking, right? <laughs> yeah, I just needed to stop what I was doing and having to be accountable to you guys. I wasn't going to disappoint you guys, you know? There's no way. So having me to report to you 
was just, there's no, there was no problem for me. But then that's how important you are to me because I, I couldn't cheat. I couldn't slip. I know from my own clients, they have trouble sometimes. Somebody, somebody has greasy corn chips or potato chips or french fries right there and their family eats it and they, they take a bite. You know, and I know how hard that is for most people, especially when they have other people in their household who don't follow the plan. I think that's one of the toughest things I know for my, the people I know. So, um, getting around that is, is hard. I know that. So but Linda, that me. Brings up a, a great question from Anthony. He wants to know how you deal with negative people making fun of you and the way you eat. Um, I usually, like I say, um, I tell them if it's somebody I don't really want to talk to or know about too much, I will just tell them that I have heart disease and my cholesterol goes up every time I eat this or that, so I can't do it. My doctor has strict orders for me not to eat that. And that usually shuts people up because they, what are they going to say, get sick? You know, so it really works just fine. But if I, somebody I might be seeing often again for some reason, maybe they're a member of the family or, um, I just be as positive as I can. I made big mistakes when I first started 34 years ago. After I found out how to eat, I told everybody in the world who, my family, everybody right away, oh my gosh, you gotta see this. You gotta, you gotta eat like me because you don't want to get fat and sick like me, and you also don't want to hurt the animals, right? I mean, you love animals. I know you do. You have that dog over there you love. <clears throat> that was to my family members as well. Well, I made, that was a huge mistake because I turned my daughter off to this day. She's a big time chief counsel lawyer, you know, she knows everything. And all of a sudden I know more than she does, right? So I'm lording it over her, what I know, but I didn't think of it that way. I thought of helping her, right? Helping her family. I have one son, my son who runs V-Dog. <clears throat> he got it right away. He's always been interested in nutrition and health and, and, <clears throat> and animals. So, sorry. <clears throat> so he, um, he jumped right in. He did it. And he's 53, I think. Or 50, yeah, 53. And he's, um, he's like I do too. And he's in the best shape ever. So that's great. But I really think it's a matter of the way you approach your family needs to be um, not in the face like I did. You need to sit back, have them watch you change over to your healthy self and be an example. And then if they say, oh my gosh, you lost so much weight or you look great or whatever it is. Well, that, <laughs> I'd like you to give out your. Uh, your email address, your contact information one more time, because you know, okay. we're going to have to, we're going to have to move along. And I really okay. Vegan, it. vegan. My email is vegan mentor at gmail.com. Okay. And my phone number, if you want to text me, don't call me. I don't answer well, that. Well, that's all right. The email is just enough. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You shared some really, really <laughs> important things and touching things for people. I'm sure you made a big difference. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks, you. Linda. Thank you so much. So dad, Dr. McDougall, I know you wanted to get into a little bit about early detection. I mean, this yeah. is an important month and we've got lots of, well, lots of topics have, to cover. We have Katie Corrick, you know, we got to start there. Uh, she was just diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, Mary, you can maybe could, could you tell us a little bit who she is. Some people. Well, everybody knows Katie Corrick. She's, she's been a, a news anchor forever and, um, maybe 30 years ago or 25 years ago, her husband died of colon cancer. Mm -hmm. And so she went on the air and had a, a colonoscopy on the air. Yeah, he was only 40, a, 43 years old. 40, 40 some years yeah, old. 43. Yeah. And um, so she had a colonoscopy on the air to promote early detection for colon cancer. And now um, she just discovered that she has breast cancer. And so she's promoting mammographies for early detection of breast cancer. And, and she's saying that if you have dense breasts, yeah, that's right. then it's much more difficult to find a breast cancer by mammography. You yeah. have to go on and have more complicated tests, which I don't know what that is. Well, but, you introduced a lot of things. Um, Should I start with dense breasts? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, the first thing to understand is, you know, she's uh, 
a spokesperson for early detection, but it doesn't seem to be working out for her. Uh, the problem with early detection is that it's really a late detection. Um, Heather, were you able to put those uh, those uh, slides up? Sure, I can. Do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, if you can. I'm happy to do that. Yep, yeah, hold on. All right. Okay, hold on. Okay. Oh, that's, good. Fresh, yeah. that's a good one. No, that's, that's, a, that's a good one. That's, uh, you know, what we I have this, to do is, I have this one too. Oh, well, wait, I like no, that. I, I, okay. <laughs> that one, I like that one. That's just fine. Uh, you know, cancer begins as a single cell that gets damaged. Uh, cells live next to each other in, in a very neighborly way. You know, if cells were allowed to divide at their own free will, you'd be a, a misshapen mass in a matter of uh, hours. Uh, your cells are uh, allowed to divide if, uh, you, if you're growing. And if you get a wound, they're, they're allowed to divide to heal, heal the wound. But otherwise, can, that's, can I ask a question a minute? Yeah. Um, why do, um, I mean, do, do cells grow like more, um, I don't know, do they get damaged more frequently in the colon or in the breast or oh, the, uh, all why, over does, the body. why does the sum up? Now, why do we hear about breast cancer and colon cancer so often? Because it's so common. Okay, so those are the ones that pe they find, or or people just that's where the colon the the cancer cells double. Well, they did. They doubled the breast. Okay. Or the colon. The, the same story here is for all, all solid tumors, Mary. So if we're talking about the breast or the colon. Okay. Or or the lung even. Prostate also. Prostate, yeah, same thing. Okay. We're talking about the same doubling that takes place. So you start as a single cell. You know, uh, most cells are neighborly. They they, they won't divide at their own free will. And you start with a single cell that gets damaged. It gets damaged by, well, a lot of environmental chemicals will cause this damage. And so it gets damaged and it starts dividing, you know, not like wildfire, it divides at an average rate of every 100 days. So, uh, you know, after 100 days of having breast cancer, uh, you have two cells. Another 100 days later, you have four and then eight and then 16. And, 32 and so on. And so you have uh, these divisions that continue. And when you've had cancer for two years, you've got a tumor mass that uh, contains 100 cells. Uh, before you can detect the tumor, it has to grow, uh, well, bigger than, bigger than one millimeter. It has to grow for at least six years. How big is a millimeter? A millimeter, you know, millimeter is the size of a, a, a period on a paper. Okay or a tip of the pencil. <laughs> Not so very big. if you take the divisions every, every three and a half months, every hundred days you divide, you get enough divisions so you've had cancer uh, for approximately six years. And the tumor size is a, is a millimeter. It contains a million cells. And it's really not detectable at this stage. And then the divisions continue again, every hundred days, that's the average doubling time. And you finally have a tumor mass of one centimeter. Okay. Well, no, I'll beg. That's about, about the size of an eraser. That's about the size of an okay. eraser. Okay. That's when it's detectable. You know, that's when you can feel it. Uh, okay. Maybe a little bit top time, maybe six months, a year or two, you can feel it earlier. But generally, that's the average. You can feel it after it's been growing. For 10 years, it contains a billion cells. But don't you think that most people think that that's when it just started? Yeah, that they've caught it a time. Yeah. It's really going to, it's, it, it's, it's an old disease that's been going on for an average of 10 years. Because it's that small, you think, well, I could just cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, is that the, the, the cells, they spread, they metastasize. And they'll metastasize at early stages, like when there's 100 cells. They'll, they'll break out of the original tumor, like we're at the breast still or the prostate. They'll break out of the tumor and they'll go through the veins and they'll spread to the brain well, and the bones. Because they're so small, and, they can just... They, they, the they, they see throughout the body. Okay. It's called metastasis. And this occurs, you know, during early stages, uh, during early developments. You know, it is, it, unfortunately, by the time a tumor is found, by the time it's a centimeter in size, the size of an eraser, uh, you know, it's already spread. If it's truly cancer, it's already spread in essentially every case. Now, now here's a, you know, a bit of a fact, and maybe we're getting into a little too many, much detail here, but uh, the tumors that are found by women 
are generally found earlier because they're the faster growing tumors. So they may be uh, six years old when they find them. Uh, because uh, the mammogram detects slow growing tumors, the average time that a tumor has been growing for a mammogram to detect it is 14 to 17 years. So you're saying if someone found it by breast self-exam, it would be earlier than- Yeah, because, it, it, because it's a mammogram. faster growing okay. tumor. You know, some, some but of, a lot of breast cancers are not really cancer. I mean, they're not the fast yeah. growing cancer. They're different kind of cancer. No, no, they, they have different, well, they are different kinds. I sorry, mean, but, um, but they're can, not- um, but they're, dark Carcinoma in site two. Well, that's a whole different story. Mary, I don't- I, I, <laughs> Well, that's we only have an hour. <laughs> really? All right, that's so. a different kind of cancer. Everybody thinks it's a cancer. Well, I know you've been with me too long. I guess so. <laughs> Dr. Carcinoma in situ is really not a cancer. It, as what Mary's trying to tell you is it has to break through. It's called invasive cancer. You know, that's what it says on your pathology report is, it, is uh, invasive breast cancer because it broke through the cell walls and it's spreading in through the bloodstream. But you know, you hear from people all the time that they, they say, I have cancer, but what they really have is not cancer. It's DCIS. That's true. That's true. But, but they'll it, tell but you they it, have cancer. Yeah, they, they'll tell you they have cancer and their doctors really don't know how to treat it. And they still call it cancer. <laughs> so they still call it cancer. <laughs> All right. All right. What I want to explain to you is why early detection is really late detection. Uh, We've known about this for a long time. You know, probably 40, 50 years, we've known about the, the doubling times of solid tumors. Um, that's why the treatments are so ineffective too. And we'll have to discuss that at different times uh, during Breast Cancer Awareness Month as why the treatments don't work. But you can tell, you know, if the disease spreads uh, when it's a year or two years uh, in existence to other parts of the body, it's too late to catch it. The cattle are already the, out of the barn before you close the door. So that's why early detection is not what we should do. You know, I bet a lot of people out there are thinking, well, what should, Dr. McDougall, what should we do? What do we do? <laughs> <Yeah>. Because, the <laughs> because everybody the, talks about early detection. If you study the, the mammograms, if you study, you know, the, the whole story behind them and look at the science, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying, why early detection fails so commonly. And it's really misplaced efforts. You know that the, the properly placed efforts, you know what I'm gonna say is preventing breast cancer. That, that's the proper effort. And if you believe like I do that the rich American diet causes breast cancer, then we ought to be preaching to people to prevent it. It's just like, you remember the days when we used to, uh, we used to handle lung cancer by early detection, everybody get a chest x-ray? Yeah. We don't do that anymore. We, we, we teach people not to smoke. You know, it's the same thing with, with mammograms and breast self-examinations, et cetera, colonoscopies, et cetera. And I have to go into detail so that you understand the whole story uh, behind these various statements that I've just made. But, you know, it's, that's not where we should be putting our efforts. And, and, you know, if you start, if you get into the understanding that I have about mammography, you'll, you'll ask, well, how do I find a breast cancer? And if you understand that, that the, uh, the, the Canadian government and the United States government, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, have told women not to do breast self-examination. So you're not, you know, I'm telling mammography is oversold. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, you're told not to do breast self-examination because you'll find problems that lead on to bigger problems that should have never got started. But I don't think that they're really told so that. I mean, well, they're supposed think, to be. I know, but don't you think that women, when, I know for a fact, because I've heard from my sister, you go in for a, a physical exam and the doctor gets mad at you because you have not scheduled a mammogram. I know, it's, you know, even, even our insurance company, like we belong to Kaiser, they do that. Mm -hmm. They push that yeah. kind of nonsense. Or, anyway, or a colonoscopy, when you get to be a certain age, you have no, to have a colonoscopy. What I'm trying to tell you is that these, these early detection techniques and the surgeries and the chemos and et cetera are oversold. And we should be putting our effort into preventing by, by eating a good diet. Now, Mary, I want to get to this last part. <laughs> well, you got if, time if you're not going to do a mammogram, if you're not going to go you see your time. doctor for a doctor's examination of your breasts, you know, what, what do you do? Well, you take a shower. You know, if you, if you find something in your breast, you know, you, you, and I don't know how frequently you shower, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. This is a 10 year old disease. 
So, you know, anyway, you can find it then. Then you go to your doctor and then you got to be real careful about the next stages that go on. And boy, I tell you, I, I could spend a lifetime telling you. If, if you really want to know more about what I think about breast cancer, there's a whole one hour lecture I gave on breast cancer. It's on YouTube. Just put in McDougall and breast cancer and you'll get a lot of thoughts. And then there are a whole bunch of books I've written on it. So I know. And there are a couple of links that you gave, right, Heather? I did. I put them in the chat. Well, Heather, so, oh, go ahead. No, I, I, I'd like to have us some questions. I think <laughs> well, I'd like to, I think, I I think I have I've done enough on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, this also has to do with cancer and, and testing. This question is from Karen that she emailed me. So a little over a year ago, both she and her husband were diagnosed with cancer. He with prostate. She has DCIS, stage one breast cancer. She had a lumpectomy, did radiation. Um, she's due for a mammogram, MRI and ultrasound, but she doesn't want to do this based on what, you know, she's heard you say. Um, she's totally changed her diet. She knows you don't recommend mammograms. So what tests would you recommend as a follow-up for someone that's already had cancer? Take a shower. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And don't, don't be fanatic about it. Uh, you've done what you can to really make a difference. The difference is made by a good diet. Uh, but I, you know, the way you were treated in the past is very controversial uh, as far as how you should treat somebody with DCIS. And you just happen to got, get in the hands of people who are enthused about doing everything and every, everything they can. You know, doctors, they never got blamed for doing everything. They get blamed for doing nothing. You know, everything when it comes to breast cancer used to be at the turn of the century, the, the, like 1800s to 1900s. Uh, they, they used to, when they found breast cancer, none of these were advanced breast cancers. They take the, the breast, the underlying muscle and the arm on the affected side. And, and when I first started in the breast cancer field, you know, I've been at this a half a century. Uh, what we do is we take the breast and we take the underlying muscles we take all the lymph nodes, you know, just really radical, radical surgery. And, you know, it's, it's swung to where now, you know, a lot of women get radiation. Well, the first they get a lumpectomy, which is, I, I, you know, I understand that. Uh, I, in fact, I recommend you get a lumpectomy with clear margins. But as far as, you know, going on to radiation and chemotherapy, et cetera, you know, I think you really need to read carefully about the benefits and risks I also use anti-hormone therapy, but you'll learn about this if you go watch that YouTube video. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't give you the whole spiel. I've been doing this for my whole life. And I got a lot to say. If you're really interested, you, you'll, again, you'll do that. You'll read, uh, read some of the books that I've written uh, that are, I don't know whether they're still free on the website, but you know, but well, Heather could probably make them free. The women's book and the... Um, McDougall's Medicine. McDougall's Medicine, yeah. Those two books, I don't know. Heather, are you offering those free stuff? I'm not, but if people email me, I can always send it to them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I hope you get a lot of emails. You don't have, you, you put it up. <laughs> Make it available. Anyway, I, it was a little confusing for people, I understand. Uh, do you have other questions, Heather? Um, let's see. Um, just questions about mammograms. Um, Let's see, uh, good bread. I know we've talked about the bread that you use, mom, in the past, yeah. but I mean, there's so many different whole grain, no oil breads that we like to use. Um, you know, Ezekiel is a great one. Yeah. Um, Dave's killer bread, people like. Yes, um, and the, the kind of bread that I use is made by Essential Baking Company. And so what you look for is a bread um, that, that is made with only a few healthy whole grain ingredients. I mean, you don't need very many ingredients to make bread. You just need flour, water, yeast, a little salt, and maybe a little bit of sweetener. And then you just knead it and let it rise and it turns into bread. So anything else that's added to bread is either added for flavor or for or to preserve it for a long time or something like that but really you only need those four or five things to make bread and so um, you just look for a, a healthy baking company i actually found a great harvest bread company here in portland now 
so I can I can go there and find healthy breads. I was having a hard time finding a really healthy bakery without had them adding oil to it. Everybody thinks you have to have oil and bread. And um, in Sonoma County, where we used to live, they have so many wonderful bakeries that, you know, just make bread from whole grains and no added oils. So I recommend that wherever you live, look at your local bakery and see if they don't have one or two kinds of bread that are made with healthy ingredients. Because these days, no one wants to make their own. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Last night, we had a really great meal. We had, we had the family over last night and uh, actually took some pictures and I know you're gonna put them up someplace, Heather. So we took some pictures and we had, uh, well, you tell them that. Well, we had they, I didn't have bread, but I had, I made tofu loaf and I made mashed potatoes and gravy. So we had this big, huge uh, meal and- Peas, uh, pea, corn. The corn, corn, we had yeah. corn. And um, we had a little bit left. So guess what we're gonna have for dinner tonight? <laughs> leftovers. leftovers but you know that, that things, meal that, brings back so many memories oh, I mean we yeah. grew up eating tofu loaf mashed potatoes gravy veggies yeah. it's just yeah, yeah. It, it was um it was it was fun to make again um and uh, I found a, a great silicone based loaf pan so I could put the um the tofu loaf in this loaf pan and then just tip it over and press it out when it was finished. I had never seen one of those before. And I bought it, you know, maybe three or four years ago, thinking that I would use it someday. And it was just, it was wonderful. It was a, the best. I'll use it to make banana bread next time. Because you can just pop the bread right out. You know, one of the things I noticed, Mary, was when I was cleaning up last night. It was really easy to clean yeah, up. No, it was easy. And I asked you, I said, do, do any of these pans need soap? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> Because there wasn't any grease in them, you know, they were really easy to clean up, and uh, and you didn't have any trouble. Well, you know, I think that's one thing a lot of people notice is that, you know, it's, uh, the pots and pans are clean, the kitchen's clean. It's not, you know, full of grease. And, and you can imagine if if all this is going on the outside and <laughs> troublesome, can you imagine what happens when it gets on the inside? You know, that's why you're sick. So well, yeah, and I think well, one of the things that I that I um, when I was talking to Linda, what I what one of the things I was trying to get across, and I think Heather and I do do the same thing, is we don't make that many things that use recipes anymore, and follow recipes. We just we just make the kind of starches and the vegetables that we like, and then we combine them together and maybe put a sauce over the top, or maybe just eat them with a little bit of, of salt or a little barbecue sauce or something like that. Instead of making a huge complicated dish that I used to make a lot of, um, these days, you know, we really keep it simple. Well, and, and we enjoy and it. And more. repetitive. And repetitive, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's what people have to understand. You know, so sometimes we've had people get offended by the idea that, you know, simplicity is something we try and teach because, you know, people are monotonous in their eating habits. <laughs> if you think about it, you have the same thing for breakfast every day. And, when you go to a restaurant, you order the same thing off a menu every time you go. You're very monotonous in your eating. And so we think this is natural behavior, just to have a few different things that you like and enjoy. And you just repeat them over and over again. Of course, they have to be the right things, a starch-based diet. So, um, you know, we, we try and teach it simple. Once in a while, we run into somebody who says that, you know, that's not the kind of cook that they are. They're really an excited well, cook. Some in these people variations. really like to have a lot of vari yeah. variation. And what I, what I tell them is we have, you know, we probably have approximately 4,000 recipes out there. There's a thousand recipes on the McDougal uh, cook, cookbook app. Is that what it's called? I don't know what it's called anymore. <laughs> but anyway, you know, so. I just go to the website and it's right there. So I, I, I don't, I don't so, know. So but you know, the, the tofu loaf recipe is, right there and I marked it as one of my favorites so I can just go to it really easily. And it's only a few ingredients, it's easy to make. So, so Linda, some, some, some viewers wanna know if you if you eat bread and if so, what kind? Um, no, I decided that bread is a trigger for me for eating too much of it. It's like kind of like the ice cream. Um, <laughs> So I, I avoid the bread and I make whole food. I really, really just use whole foods and I just make any combination I have. And sometimes I have oatmeal for dinner with my berries, like a dessert. 
you know, I have my blueberries and I have so all the frozen cherries from Costco are great. So I put that in there and sometimes I put in a little cocoa powder in there. <laughs> it's like a big chocolate cookie. And I'm happy as can be and it's not making me fat, so I'm good. <laughs> uh -huh. So you so, kind of, you, you kind of avoid things that you have to read labels on. Right. I don't I don't buy packaged food very often at all. Unless I'm having company and I need something. Yeah. I have a question. What's the best kind of tofu to buy, Dr. John? Oh, I, I wouldn't know. What, I wouldn't know what kind of tofu <laughs> next. I know there's farm and there's, there's extra farm. Extra farm and there's yeah, it's so good. <laughs> but, it's so good. But, but I know you've talked about soy isolates before. Can you tell us what those but, are? Well, the, those are things like uh, they're isolated soy protein. It's a it goes through a lot of chemical processes to just end up having protein. Mm -hmm. But tofu is not made from this. Tofu is yeah. just made from uh, okay. from a precipitated like a soy milk. Yeah, that, that's made with a precipitate, and so it takes some of the water out and firms it up. Okay. And so Good. I usually buy um, an organic, um, either firm or extra firm tofu and then if i'm going then that's for things like tofu loaf and burgers and mm -hmm. or if i'm going to chop up little pieces of tofu and add it to a, a stir fry um if i'm going to use the tofu for a dressing then i use the silken tofu i see i gotcha also i know soy is good for fighting cancer because it uh, has a phytoestrogen in it well, right. you know, that, 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 the science on that is still a bit confusing. Really? I think, I think what we can agree on is that you know, <laughs> plant-based, you know, plant foods fight cancer. And uh, you know, soy has uh, some mixed comments about it. And right now, I think the jury's still out. But, uh, okay. We use soy in our diet. We just don't use isolated soy protein. Yeah. We don't, okay. use, it. We don't use fake foods and things like that. We use the traditional soy products, but just, just okay. to, like soy milk and and tofu and so on. Okay. <laughs> so there's some some chatter in the uh, the chat box about oils and using you know a little bit of olive oil on your salad and and why we don't think that's a good idea. Oh, uh, you know, I, I, again, when I you know take you back to the beginning, when I put this all together, it was to take care of people who were really needy. And I used to think these are people with just heart disease and cancer and terrible diabetes. But what it turned, turned out is that pretty much everybody in our society is needy. And you've got really serious weight problems, serious ball problems, uh, various arthritis problems. And, you know, every, pretty much everybody's needy. So, you know, the diet I put together for the really sick people it turns out to be a diet that basically everybody needs. And it's really strict, uh, you know, so... Well, it's not strict for us. It uh, maybe sounds strict to other people. Yeah, well, the oils we don't put in. So, you know, you want to lose weight. Okay, once you learn the fat you eat, the fat you wear. And when you eat oil, you know, because it's already in the form for storage, it goes to your body fat. You know, whether it's olive, olive fat or olive oil or, you know, safflower oil or corn oil, you know, whatever, whatever kind of oil you eat, it just, it doesn't burn it. It stuffs it in your buttocks and your thigh and your abdomen. So if you want to use a little oil, you know, okay, that's kind of up to you. Maybe you want to stuff a little fat in your abdomen. <laughs> but it's also a processed food, oil. So, yeah, You've gone so far as to call it a poison, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it causes you to bleed. You don't want to, you, they're, they're, I, I can't go through the whole litany of things that cause it. <laughs> do you want me to? You know, the fat you eat, the fat you wear ought to be enough, you know, the fact that, you know, some of these fats, they, they cause the blood to be thin. So you have an increased risk of bleeding. So if you get in an auto accident, you're more likely to bleed to death. Don't they promote cancer too? They promote cancer too. Okay. They suppress the immune system. You know, they suppress the immune system. So, you know, less arthritis, so less arthritic pain is one of the things they brag about by taking these various kinds of good fats. Well, they suppress the immune system in terms of uh, your arthritis, but they suppress the whole immune system. So your immune system that fights cancer, your immune system that fights uh, infections, viruses, and you know bacteria and so on. I mean, the, the whole thing's compromised by the oil. You know, so yeah, you don't you don't want to add oil to your diet if you want to do the best you can. But the question comes down to the fact: how much abuse can the human body take? You know, I've tested it. 
It can take a lot of abuse. It takes a lot of abuse. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you tonight all the things I've done to it, but I guarantee it. The only, the only way you're going to find out all the things I've done to my body is to attend the 12 day internet based program. And I'll tell the story there. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I, I, the body's tough. But you know, if you're tired of testing the limits of survival and you want to see how well yours would do, you know, this is the program. I did it. I put it together right the first time. And that's why we pretty much teach the same thing for the last 46 years. I bet, well, and I bet like we you continue. Always, <laughs> you always say you teach the optimal diet and people will figure out ways to, you know, adapt it or cheat, you know, on their like. own. So it's not an all or nothing thing. You know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't live a risk-free life either. I used to windsurf in the ocean with big sharks. You know, I, I, I used to forget to wear my safety belt all the time. I, you know, I used to smoke cigarettes, you know, I mean, I haven't lived a risk-free life and it has been my choice. But when you aren't informed, when you're lied to, when it comes to the area of the food, you don't have a chance. It's kind of like in the days when everybody smoked, you know, 60 years ago. You didn't have a chance because they were lying to you. The tobacco industry were lying to you. <laughs> the food industry is lying to you. The medical businesses are lying to you. It's the food. Thank you for informing us. No, I just thought I'd let you know again. <laughs> it is well, important. I, yeah, I pretty much guarantee you're going to hear the same old stuff <laughs> every Sunday night when you tune in. It, uh, <laughs> you know, we're going to try and try and liven it up with people like Linda. But uh, you know, I, I, I've got I got a few stories to tell. So <laughs> you do. You've been doing this for a long time. I have. Almost half a century. That's crazy. Yeah, it is when you think about it that way. Well, it, when you think about it, that we just had our fiftieth. Um, anniversary from graduation from medical school, 50 years. It just happened like two weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, the, the, the nice thing what I took away from it was that um, I'm one of the few people, there's I think one other person in our class, our class was only 28 people and five of them died. Hmm. But there's one other, only one other person in, in, our, in our class is still working. And uh, we, we enjoy some of the best health of all the people that we talk to. And my best friends dying of, uh, mm -hmm. dying of you know, very serious diseases. So it's, it's sad. But, you know, it made me feel good that we're still active and we're still at work. <laughs> we're still trying. Yeah, we're still trying. And there's a world out there that needs to be saved. <laughs> so, you know, so you're my hero, heroine and hero. I mean... Yeah. I wouldn't be here. I would have been dead at least 30 years ago. Yeah, well, well I'm sure of it. I know, I know I would have been dead. Well, Linda, but you know what I wanted, I wanted people to hear as part of your story was that, you know, you've had some rough times and like the, like the vegan ice creams and so on. I think you helped a lot of people by telling that particular story. And, uh, you know, you've known me for 36 years. So, well, it's been, you know, I guess all the time we spend together, uh, you get a little bit better all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. one of the reasons that Mary and I do so well is we're constantly involved in this information. Yeah. We get, so we get this uh, constant feedback mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, of, of, of talking to people about good food, diet, and, you know, how they get better and so on. We've got a lot of motivation. Well, that's why we like these Sunday night shows is because it keeps us motivated and um, it keeps us involved in, um, recipes and finding new foods and talking about food and it really it keeps us active and keeps us talking to people about food because otherwise we would just sit back and probably, <laughs> probably not do as well as we're doing right now. Well I know that um, the doctors I've had all along I have one who's a plant-based eater right now but I didn't all along and I had a, a lump the size of a golf ball in my left breast before I had the thyroid cancer and I went to my doctor and he took it out and he said it wasn't cancer I said well why did I have it doc and he's and I told him what I was eating you know cottage cheese at the time chicken and fish and a, a little bit of ice cream and he said, oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with your diet. So the, I think one of the other problems we have for everybody is that we have doctors and even nurses who do not get it. They don't understand it. And they, like I had one friend of mine who 
didn't believe me. She believed her doctor because I'm not a doctor. And she wouldn't look up Dr. John McDougall for me because her doctor already told her that what she's eating is just fine. And she had to do the chemo and she had to do the radiation. And 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 then she died anyway. Yeah, that's yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Linda, you're you're a heretic. <laughs> you're out there. You're out there challenging people. You know, and in this day and age, uh, you can pretty much do anything you want. You know, back back many years ago, this kind of talk would get people thrown in jail. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, the, things have changed. Well, even mm -hmm. my own doctor now, who's plant based, even, even telling the truth is is okay. Uh, my doctor, I have, is plant based, and it's a funny story. He didn't want me as a I mean, he, I went to him because my doctor, who I was working on to get off fish because he was Japanese. Anyway, he wasn't there that day and I had an earache. So I went to my, this a new doctor and he was looking in my ear and he said, I am too. I said, you're what? I had my earrings that say vegan on them. Oh. And, he, and so I said, I am too. I don't know what you're talking about. He said, I'm vegan. I said, you are? Oh my God. And he said, do you want to be my patient? And I said, no, no, I'm working on my current doctor. He's still eating fish and I'm trying to get him off the fish. So anyway, I went home that day and he switched me to him. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'll stay. <laughs> but anyway, I recently got him off the oil. Oh, good. Yeah. But um, I asked him last time I saw him, have you gotten any other doctors to change over to your plant diet? He says, uh, no. Yeah. I said, do you ever talk about it? He said, no. <laughs> this you is know. today. This is today. He's afraid yeah. to tell Kaiser doctors. I understand, Linda. And, you know, the world is changing. And uh, well, you, uh, I tell you, we've got you and I and Mary we have many years to look back upon. And, and I think things are, are getting interesting. That they're interesting. Well, let's leave it at that. Now, I just want to take a minute, Heather, to tell people some of the things that we're doing. Uh, we have a class, uh, four classes that we're going to be starting. We're going to be putting the announcement out on them. Uh, if you uh, if you have been in an argument with somebody about protein or fats or carbohydrates or starches, etc., uh, <laughs> you need to take this class because you'll never lose an argument again. <laughs> and that's the goal is to teach people that, uh, you know, the, the whole history, the whole science behind protein. And we're going to pa be passing out, and I've never done this before, but it's working out well now, is uh, we send out a PDF uh, of the whole slide presentation. You guys call it a deck. And right. so people have it forever. And uh, all the references and the slides are quite complete. And uh, they offer the whole story in addition to the lectures. But anyway, we're going to do a whole series. We're going to go uh, protein and fats and, oh, and nice. uh, starches and vitamins and minerals. And so Heather's going to be announcing that. And uh, well, just a few days ago, we had an, an alumni meeting. That was a lot of fun. We, people are doing well in the 12-day program. So uh, you got a course. date coming up, Heather? So our next course, our next 12-day online course is October 14th through the 25th. We've got a few spots available. Registration closes October 7th. Okay. Oh, only, only well, a week from now, right? Yep. And it's our last course of the year. Our next course won't be until January. So oh my goodness. we'll be busy with all of our half day events and our, our nutrition series. And we're, we'll be we're bringing be lots busy, of, yeah, yeah lots, lots of things coming up. We're very excited. We're and of course, these fun. Sunday night meetings every Sunday night, 5 p.m. Pacific. We won't miss those. We really enjoy our time with you all. So thank you all for being here. It's actually six o'clock. That hour flew by oh, once again. That was great. Well, we'll just say, just thank you so bring, much. Bring, 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 bring. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And thank you for your 12-day program. All right. Thanks, Linda. So thank I can be skinny. Yeah, you're, you're great. <laughs> you're just great. You're <laughs> Thanks for being here, Linda. Thank you so much, Heather. Anyway. But it, we're, we're making progress. You know, we've got a lot of people that watch this particular presentation and we'd like it to grow. So I'll tell people uh, that, you know, you can get it at, at our best and maybe our worst every uh, Sunday night at five o'clock, <laughs> but we'll all be here together to help you. We'll be so, here regardless. <laughs> yeah. Thank all right. you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Linda. Bye. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Dr. McDougall, that was great. See you all next Sunday. Bye, everybody.